Hello, hello, hello. I wanted to show you this here. This is absolutely stunning. 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 Stunning beauties. I got some hand cream. I got some different I got different creams on my hands. Here are the different creams. And here. And I'm going to do a foot massage video now. The first time in this year. Nice weather. It's gotten warm. I can be barefoot on the lawn. And it is awesome. It's beautiful. I'm going to put the camera into my shoe. Okay. Doesn't stay. <laughs> it does not stay. Okay, I have to do it differently. Do it like this here. Now, I can show foot massage, foot and leg massage. So I got different creams. I got quince cream from Dr. Hauschka and a lavender face cream, night cream I made for myself and a an herbal cream from a with particular tree sap from a South American tree. I forgot the name of this tree now, but it smells really, really awesome. So that I made, I rubbed into my hands now, and I'm going to be applying to both feet. And I always do. I make sure you get it in between the toes. Gently massage in between the toes. Like this. Feels real good. It's real refreshing. It's relaxing and it prevents any kind of skin problem that people have. So I make my creams with clays and they completely cure and heal and prevent illnesses. And they completely cure the skin and revitalize the tissue and everything it's really really amazing protect the, the entire foot pads and everything softens the, the callus and circulates the feet with blood and oxygen. It's really, 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 really wonderful. It's a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Really, really great. And I am curing my flu with clays. And it works amazingly. Absolutely amazingly. And with a lot of yoga and meditation. With a lot of breathing. And with practicing non-resistance. That in itself, it's just for verbal communication. The, our language is just filled, you know, with dualities. And, 
and we don't know it. It's uh, it's ingrained into us. And we don't realize how much of our language is actually based on measurement and du dualism. So to explain something non-dualistic with a dualistic language is very difficult. And you can see that when you watch the conversations between Judah Krishnamurti and Dr. David Bohm, how they were constantly laughing and giggling and and recognizing how the language they're using to explain these things is very limited. So they have to explain it in many different ways and use different analogies and different expressions to somehow capture the non-dualistic way of living. Yes, we are real God. It's so nice to sit, just sit in nature. It is amazing here right now, absolutely amazing. The energy is just amazing. The beauty of this garden. and the smells. And always breathe, breathing. Don't forget to breathe, it's very important. Breathe and allow whatever there is. If it's an internal struggle, don't resist it. Don't resist any emotion, 
or anything that's going on inside of you. Love yourself. You can fold your arms across your chest and you can say to yourself, I love you. You're precious. I love you. And I love all living beings. I got some paint stuck on my fingernails. It's very easy to allow the moment the way it is and sit with it when you are relaxed and when you feel good so that's why it is important that we do things that make us feel good so it so that way it's much easier to accept the now moment right? don't fall into the trap though of becoming addicted to the moments that give you pleasure because when you get addicted to that, then you have to repeat this and it becomes a habit and becomes neurotic. You know, there are different degrees of addiction. You know, if you're addicted to sitting on the grass, then that is healthy. <laughs> it's, good, it's a good addiction. And you should do this a lot. But don't become addicted to these other things that, you know, like porn and gambling or substance abuse or any of these things. I talked about this last night. Don't because those are act, those are act outs and they are very unhealthy and they are very very bad. They are very bad for your body and brain and for your future. So you have to love yourself the way you are. You are precious. Tell yourself that. And don't act anything out. Don't. Don't act out the pleasure, repeating the pleasure, seeking. Give yourself good pleasure, the real good, healthy, wholesome pleasure and joy, like with wholesome, natural, healthy things like nature, grass, tea, herbal tea, massages, Anything that is soothing and relaxing and good and peaceful and loving and giving to the world, that is good, good for you. When any other cravings come up for alcohol or porn or you know, I mean, porn, it's, it's not totally unhealthy. It's, it's healthy, but it becomes unhealthy psychologically when p 
people don't do anything else with their time when they start to isolate themselves from the world. That's very, very unhealthy. It's very important to have deeper conversations with someone. It's very important to have friends who can help you and who you can help, whom you can help. It's very important to have good friends so we can help each other very important so we can cry on each other's shoulders so we can talk about that what bothers us it's very important so when someone doesn't want to hear then find someone else to talk to Protect your boundaries. This is another thing I wanted to talk about. Very, very, very extremely important to protect your boundaries. That also means you don't cater to someone else's ego anymore. Protecting your boundary means no more catering to someone else's ego or greed or whatever they want. No more catering. You only do what you want to do at any given moment. Not, not what someone else does when you don't want to do it. It's very, very important to keep that in mind at all times. And don't let the ego tell you some stories why you have to cater to that other person because the ego is very good at that. Don't fall for that. The ego is inventive and wants to create escape routes away from the now away from you, away from the situation and away from the truth. The ego is a modality of deception and lies. It means well because it wants to protect you from suffering, but it doesn't work. The ego and anything that is acted out just creates more suffering. Drinking alcohol creates a tremendous amount of suffering. I've seen it many, many, many times with friends. There was one lady, she said, when I ex tried to explain to her, that was years ago, I tried to explain to her, a lady from Germany who lives with her German husband, they live in the United States. I met her a couple of years ago. And a very intelligent woman, everything gorgeous looking like a photo model and everything. Rich, they're well, very, very wealthy, got everything, everything they can imagine. Her husband is a psychiatrist, but <laughs> that, that in itself is a very neurotic profession. But, you know, so he's a doctor, a physician who drinks and <laughs> smokes. <laughs> and she does too, of course. So, 
and so I tried to explain to her I, tr I said I care about you uh, I don't want you to continue drinking and smoking you're ruining your life it is it is horrible what happens down the line it's horrible absolutely horrible suffering and she said to me I'm not worried about it. I, we have money now and we want to enjoy our luxuries. <laughs> luxuries? <laughs> it's like, what? You know? <laughs> it's like, gosh, it's, it's like completely reversed. That's not luxury to drink and smoke. That's enslavement. It is, it's addiction. It's, it's self-mutilation, that's what that is. It's self-destruction to do that. If you love yourself, you, there's only one way, and that is to quit this right now. Right now. Throw that stuff away. Quit it right now. And when the cravings come up, you sit there and you don't do anything. You just sit there with it and breathe very deeply. The cravings come up. Okay, let them come up. Let them run through you. They're not going to kill you. The acting out is killing people. The giving in is killing people. You sit there, you allow the cravings to come up, even if it feels painful, let it come up. Allow it to come up. You can help, you can alleviate things, you get massages, you know, particularly for people who have a lot of money. You know. Boy, they can do a lot of stuff that alleviates a withdrawal with holistic things like Lots of massages that you get from a mas professional massage therapist. You get spa treatments. You go to spas and have facials and all kinds of things. You know, visit yoga classes, meditation. You have a lot of options. So there's no excuse to continue to smoke or drink. No excuse at all particularly not for someone who has a lot of money. But what happened is my friend didn't listen to me and her husband particularly didn't listen. He took offense because he's a doctor, not I am. Okay. You are just, you know, you're not a doctor. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm the, you're like, I'm the doctor of, you know, drinking and smoking. <laughs> yes, right. Boy, prescribing toxic drugs to patients. You're the doctor, yes. So anyway, that's um, just because someone is a doctor. <laughs> obviously, that doesn't mean very much. That just means that they have studied pharmaceutical medicine. That's why it is also called medicine. <laughs> it should be called farmer medicine the the whole study subject it shouldn't be called anything else because it's not about healing it's it's just about money it's about it's a it's commerce it's an industry it's a drug pushing industry that's what it is they make a lot of money so <laughs> A physician has nothing to say to me unless he is a vegan and lives a holistic lifestyle and tells people how to heal themselves like Dr. Michael Grieger. I listen only to people like Dr. Michael Grieger. Okay. Those are my heroes. Dr. Grieger is an amazing person. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So, and anyone who practices holistic healing is amazing. 
Dr. Richard Schultz, Dr. Uh, Dr. Gary Null, and Donna Pesson, many, many others that are getting into holistic healing. They are all amazing. So much information out there. So quit all the all the toxic things right now. Turn your lives around. Quit toxic people. Quit quit everything that's toxic for your body. Everything. You know, all the pharma, drugs, toxic people, abusive people and so on. All of it. Quit that all. I'm making a video. And you sit with it and you allow the, the addiction to come up the, the way it feels, you know, and you don't act on it. You don't do anything. You don't give in to it. And you don't resist it. You don't resist the, the feeling. You don't do, just don't do anything. It's not about conquering or resisting. It's just, it's about feeling it all the way, all the way. And if, even if it takes a couple of days, you know, it took me half a year, half a year to undo the physical habituation that I had of taking pharmaceutical drugs for depression in 2003. And it had monstrous, monstrous withdrawal symptoms. That's what most people don't understand. And the doctors, they don't tell you that. Monstrous withdrawal symptoms. All the psychological problems, they get like a thousand times worse. So that's why people will go back on it, which happened to me one time. I tried to withdraw from it, and I went back to the psychiatrist. But then I quit it again in 2003, and this time I knew that was it. You know, there is no going back. There is no going back. Even if I die from the withdrawal symptoms, I will not go back to this toxic stuff that almost killed me, almost ruined my, my organs, my vital organs, my liver and my kidneys. That's insane to take this, like a lifetime or something. It's insane. You don't ever want to take that stuff. It's a lie. It is, it is, it's a vicious, vicious deception, the pharmaceutical drugs. It's there to keep people addicted. It's not there to cure anyone or help anyone. It doesn't even alleviate anything. It does not, did not even alleviate my pain. It was sort of like a placebo effect at best. And, of course, had side effects, started to make me real tired, and then it has horrific withdrawal symptoms. But I stuck through it. I sat with it, and it was not pleasant. It was excruciatingly painful, but I stuck with it all the way through. And then things got better. And I took Dr. Schultz's detox formulas, and I took his charcoal and bentonite capsules and, and powder, and then things got better. It slowly started to detox my body, my, my system. Very gradually, the things got flushed out. The toxins got flushed out, and I had more energy, started to feel better. And then 
I learned, as I learned, it's a constant learn. You don't just go to someone and take their stuff. You try all kinds of different things. You, you become your own test person. You become your own scientist, your own doctor. You become your own expert. And that's how life also should be and is. That's taking responsibility, you know, to, to get into this full, fully, all the way. That's what responsibility is. Not lean back and go to someone and say, here, fix me, you know, or go to a guru and worship that person. No, that's not taking responsibility. Responsibility is when you take your life into your own hands. On all levels. That's taking responsibility. And then you can think better and you can, you have more energy and you have really, really great insights and ideas and creativity and so on. This is a fact. I have tested this on myself many, 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 many times. So this is a fact. And I hope that people will listen to me and take my advice and not be scared when feelings or cravings or whatever comes up or lust or need or whatever comes up that is urgent and pressing. Don't act on it. Sit with it. I'm not saying to suppress lust, but in the moment of meditation, sit with whatever comes up and don't act on it. And then see what happens. Don't expect anything to happen. Then you're back in the, in the same loop. Sit with it and say to yourself, this is how I feel right now. I have this lust or I have this craving or I have this desire or this wish. And allow it to be there and talk to you and speak to you and speak through you and flow through you. Okay. And allow that to happen. And not just in one meditation, but do this also throughout the day, where you, you stop what you're doing for a moment and you say to yourself, I'm going to allow this now, I'm allowing this now. And I tell you, I promise to you, it will free you, it will liberate you. And it creates a very, 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 very strange feeling in the chest. It's a real strange feeling. It's like you can almost feel the ego saying, what, what, <laughs> what are you doing? And you say, no, ego, no, no, you don't need to. You don't need to help me. I'm feeling it. And the ego says, but I need to be needed. And you say, no, you can rest now. You can rest. Take it easy. And you feel it. Feel what comes up. And feel this. You know, feel whatever discomfort there is. Feel this. Yeah, this is it. Like whatever it is. This is it. Like, for example, in my case, like this feeling, I'm never ever gonna <laughs> gonna hear my mental illness or my jealousy or my OCD. So, and that's there, and I feel it, and I feel strange in the chest, you know, to say okay to it.
don't resist it that's it if that's it then it's so okay and I don't know I don't have the answers to everything and that's also okay and that also doesn't feel good because we want to fix everything sometimes we don't know how to fix something and then we can sit with that there's a cat in heat <laughs> calling for a boyfriend <sighs> so <laughs> <coughs> so we can sit with that the cat can say I need love hello <laughs> And and I can say, yeah, this is it, you know. <laughs> I'm never going to conquer my mental illness or my, my OCD and my jealousy. Okay, so be it. And you sit with it instead of throwing something, you know, instead, instead of <laughs> having an, an anger outburst or something about it. You know, because that's also just resistance. No more resistance. And when the anger comes up, about it, also don't resist the anger, but don't act it out. And that's how you flow through it. That's how it circul circulates through you and through every tissue in your body. And when tears come, oh, they are good. Let them flow. Let them flow unrestrictedly. Let them flow. It doesn't matter whether you are a guy or a woman. Let the tears roll. We're all made out of the same materials. Just a slightly different brain anatomy. We have a different body anatomy, but our cells are still cells. You know. We still have emotional pain and we still have the need to be loved and all of that is there whether a man thinks he can allow himself to do this or not according to society standards or whatever forget all of that forget all all of the society standards and the pressure cooker that you're in I explained this last night in detail about this what happens to men i talked to my brother for a long time today about this what's happening in men in particular and i told him that i feel i feel for him i feel for men i understand how difficult this all is but <laughs> the ego you know particularly you know the male ego that i don't accept that i don't i i don't roll the red carpet out for it i say don't act it out don't do it then you see what happens then a new energy comes up no more giving in to anyone no more giving in to an alcoholic person or whatever these people are doing there, there, there are people that petition for psychopath. Oh, the poor psychopath. Are, are they kidding me? You know, it's like, what? I mean, how far does this go? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, like man cave groups. The poor man. They are not allowed to exploit women anymore. My goodness. Okay, so we need to become aware about this, you know. This is ego, and you don't cater to it anymore. You don't cater to your own ego anymore, and you don't cater to someone else's ego anymore, whether it's a female ego or male ego or whatever. So you don't want to cater to an ego anymore. Any ego. No more catering, no more giving in to someone's neurotic needs.
we need to speak out, we need to say something, we need to try to help other people also. You know. We need to do activism in that regard, and we need to show other people how they can heal themselves. And when the egos get mad, don't, don't give up, don't give in. You stand your ground. This is what's going to help you. you know. It's up to you. you know. Do you want to heal yourself? Or you don't want to heal yourself. But I'm giving, you know, we are giving. When we care, we're giving these informations to people. And that's all we can do. We can't struggle with anyone, but we can give very good information, good advice. Not in a struggle form, but in a, but in a way to say, this has helped me, you know, and I know this has helped people, this, this has helped this or that person. And pass that on, that information. And then the world can collectively become safer and better for all of us, for every living being. Okay, you guys take care. Bye-bye.